Good evening and welcome to the Islamic House of Wisdom nightly Ramadan program. We're going to start with the recitation of the Holy Quran with Brother Ihsan Karimi. Ba'da salati ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Inshallah, I'll be reciting from Surah Luqman, Ayat 12. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد آتينا لقمان الحكمة أنش Good evening again and welcome to the Islamic House of Wisdom nightly Ramadan program. We're glad that you're, you're, that you're with us. And just like to remind you that the program starts, uh, or, or most of our programs at Islamic House of Wisdom has shifted into uh, humanitarian programs. So at noon, at 12 p.m., we have meal distribution for community members. And then at 2 p.m., Holy Quran recitation, 6 to 7 p.m. Thursday through Sunday, Youth of Wisdom Zoom interaction program. 9.30, the nightly program starts with Dua Iftitah. And later on, we continue with the rest of the program. Once again, we thank you for being with us. And now we continue with the reflection on faith with Imam Ilahi Ba'da Salati Ala Muhammad Wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let us start with the dua of Yawm al-Sabat Ashar, the prayer of the day of 17th of Holy Month of Ramadan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 
اللهم اهدني فيه لصالح لصالح الأعمال واقض لي فيه الحوائج والآمال يا من لا يحتاج إلى التفسير والسؤال يا عالما بما في صدور العالمين صل على محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين الحمد لله رب العالمين That is a great honor this evening to have two great guests You are not guests in reality, you are hosts both uh, Dr. Mahmoud Hadidi and Dr. Muzammal Ahmad. Uh, it is an honor and pleasure to welcome you to this beautiful uh, evening service of Holy Month of Ramadan from Islamic Council of Wisdom. Yes, it is an honor to welcome to men of leadership and action. I observe during this holy month of Ramadan that how Dr. Hadidi and Dr. Ahmad were involved not only in their professional works in the hospital and trying to save people, mm -hmm. try to save lives and especially during this global painful pandemic period that we are going through i saw both uh, dr ahmed and dr hadidi also dealing with the, the six who suffer from this coronavirus in the hospitals uh, it takes so much love and so much sacrifice of what uh, both of you are doing God bless you and your family and keep you healthy and safe but also I saw both of you just last Wednesday uh, participated in uh, our meeting of Imams Council of Michigan and uh, uh, contributed a lot both to the Imams and and centers and our community and all the communities and and i want to explain that uh, said khalil you mentioned that the food for our community members as a matter of fact uh, that is for everyone uh, but obviously you consider everybody as our communities so uh, uh, we have uh, dearborn dearborn highs community that's our next neighbors but everybody in general uh, in in this country and humanity, everybody is our community, and the food and service is for everyone. So we don't discriminate based on race or religion or color or anything. And I uh, saw both Dr. Hadidi and Dr. Ahmad uh, uh, actually doing the same work, and I don't know how. It is only a blessing to. Uh, be fasting and work in the hospital and then attend all these uh, services and all these communications. And I saw Dr. Hadidi even physically coming from mosque to mosque, place to place and distribute food and boxes of uh, like a stuff for, for food, for kitchen, for families. Uh, it is a pleasure to, to have you here. And actually, the month of Ramadan is about action. So, although we said, well, no, Muhammad, 
that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that uh, the faithful fasting, even when they are tired and go to bed, their sleep is part of the worship of Ramadan. Uh, but, but in reality, it looks like you don't sleep too much and uh, it's all action and all ibadah. Uh, month of Ramadan is month of fasting and prayer, but it is month of action and, and outreach. Uh, it's uh, very uh, amazing that exactly on the same day that we are talking, on 17th of the holy month of Ramadan, uh, it is uh, marking the, the intasar, Yawmul Furqan, the Holy Quran says, Yawm al Furqan, Yawm al Taqal Jam'an. The, the victory of uh, the Prophet and the faithful over the pagans in an area called Badr between Mecca and Medina, that happens exactly the same day. Uh, month of Ramadan, people are fasting, but at the same time, they consider uh, their uh, Ramadan as uh, an opportunity of, of action. So they consider it. As a matter of fact, what happened today on the second year of Hijra, the second year of migration, was the foundation for Fath Mecca, which is the highest victory of uh, the faithful, the day of liberation of Mecca from the pagans, that happened on the 8th of uh, Hijra. That means like six years after Badr uh, was the Yom al-Fatih, the liberation of, of Mecca. And it's interesting that even Fatih Mecca happened during the holy month of Ramadan. So uh, Badr was on 17th and Fatih Mecca liberation of of Mecca from paganism and idols was on the 20th of holy month of Ramadan. So the Muslim community, they consider Shah Ramadan as Shahr al-Amal, Shahr al-Difa an al-Haq, al-Adal, al-Hurriya. So they thought that, yes, they are fasting and they are praying, but at the same time, uh, they are consider uh, uh, action for uh, uh, for human dignity, for for justice, for human rights, the al madlumin. They consider all of this helping the suffering, helping people in pain, helping people under oppression and injustice. They consider that as a duty during the holy month of Ramadan. The call of Ramadan is call of ta'awan al birr wa taqwa, cooperation. The call of Ramadan is فَاسْتَبِقُوا khirat. No matter where you are, have a competition for, for kindness, competition for, uh, for caring for humanity. شَهْرُ الْإِحْسَانِ لَنْ تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ That if you want to get to the, the stage of al-birr and righteousness, then contribution and uh, charity and helping the people in need is part of this musabiqa alladhina yusari'una fil khayrat so uh, in reality what you are doing uh, both of our guests during ramadan is matching with uh, the mission of ramadan and the way that the faithful they used to consider month of Ramadan as a month of uh, not only as Siyam was Salat, but the, the month of Sadaqat, the month of charity, the month of dialogue, the month of outreach, the month of empathy, solidarity, and support for, for the suffering. Alhamdulillah that you are handling that part very well. The second point that I like to mention is that also today uh, we have another observation and that is Yom al -Um, the day of mother, Mother's Day. And uh, 
And I know, I wonder if any of you uh, still mom is alive, which is a blessing if that's the case. I lost my mom, unfortunately, almost uh, a month, 40 days ago. And, and I feel really that the vacuum, you know, when your mom is alive and, and you think that you have a source of prayer, a source of inspiration, a source of love and support and prayer that anytime you are in a trouble, you ask your mom to pray for you and you feel that her prayer is answered. And uh, when you lose your mom, really you lose a lot in, in a spiritual way that my goodness, like you lose a huge fundamental spiritual support. So for everyone whose mom is still alive, don't miss the opportunity of uh, showing love. Al-Umm Madrasatun Ida A'adatha A'adatha Sha'ban Tayyib Al-A'raqi A'adatha Sha'ban Tayyib Al-A'raqi That the mom is really a madrasa. That is uh, uh, the first teacher teacher of love and teacher of respect that we learn from our mom uh, the lessons of caring and kindness, discipline and uh, dedication. We learn the lesson of faith and friendship, the lesson of forgiveness. Uh, we get energy and uh, empathy. So that is why the Quran, uh, when it says, uh, immediately is talking about the mom that and another verse is this was your mom that carried you and she went from pain to pain suffering to suffering from weakness to weakness she brought you, and when you came to this world, she took care of you. There is a hadith from Imam Zain al Abidin salam talking about mom. وَأَنَّهَا وَقَتْكَ بِسَمْعِهَا وَبَسَرِهَا وَيَدِهَا وَرِجْلِهَا وَشَعْرِهَا وَبَشَرِهَا فَرَضِيَتْ أَنْ تَشْبَعَ وَتَجُوعُ وَتَكْسُوكَ وَتَعْرِي فَتَشْكُرُهَا عَلَى قَدْرِ ذَلِكَ وَلَا تَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا بِعَوْنِ اللَّهِ وَتَوْفِيقِهِ Imam is saying that this is your mom that she was the source of your existence and she brought you to this war. She carried you. She helped you. She protected you. She fed you. She cooked for you. She cleaned you. She did everything for you. And make sure that you appreciate that. But at the same time, you cannot thank her enough, except you are really blessed with the, uh, with the blessing of God that he would help you to uh, be grateful to your mom. Of course, to your dad as well. The Quran in four times, in four verses says, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا But today is the day of mom. We are talking about mom, obviously, but parenting in, in general. But motherhood in particular. Motherhood is a, a merciful mission, really. That is uh, a, a, a heavy, heavy opportunity and challenge that the moms, they take care of that. And today is the day to show our appreciation. It's not just for, a, just for like a flower or, or a card or candy, but a real sincere love and appreciation for the first teacher in our life, the teacher who taught us how to be generous, how to be wise, how to work hard, how to be strong, how to be giving. So she brought 
so much inspiration uh, to our life and to our values and to our faith. And I'm sure that both Dr. Hadidi and Dr. Ahmed may want to share something, not only from their work and what is going on in the community, Muslim community, other communities, but also at the personal level of your experience, your family lessons, the thing from mom that you may want to share with us and uh, uh, actually an education for young generation to appreciate the, the services of their parents, their dad and their mom. And we are ready tonight to uh, listen to our guests and to learn from them as Seth Khalil is moderating the, the program. But again, we thank you very much that despite of being fasting and working hard and now coming here, being part of this program at 10 p.m., 11 p.m., God bless you and energize you. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Imam. I appreciate it. And again, welcome to the Islamic House Wisdom uh, Nightly Ramadan program. And I'd like to walk, welcome our, our friends, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Al Hadidi, Chairman of the Michigan Muslim Community Council, and uh, Dr. Muzami Al Ahmad, Secretary of the Board as well. And you, you are two of the finest doctors in our community, medical in the medical community also. And you know you are an inspiration to all of us working at the hospital at this difficult time, saving lives and being involved in the community, involved with outreach and bringing the community together, both the Muslim community and the uh, community at large. And I've had the pleasure of, of attending meetings with Dr. Ahmad and Dr. Hadidi, and I wanna thank you for all you do. Please share with us uh, your thoughts about what you're doing right now, saving lives, and then your activities in the community, and also educate us a little bit more about the MMCC, if you, if you, if you don't mind. Let's we'll start with Dr. Hadidi. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, I, I, I really would like to thank uh, Brother Khalil and Imam Ilahi. Thank you for arranging for this uh, broadcast again. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was really inspired by the recitation of the Quran I heard today. It was amazing. It, it, was, it was so refreshing. I'm very thankful that I had that opportunity to listen to that. And I'm very thankful for the message you gave. Uh, was very, very right on Imam Ilahi. We always thank you for the wisdom you gave. And the Islamic House of Wisdom has always been a, a beacon in the community with with with, with dawa, with, with righteousness, with with community work. I've always uh, aspired with all your work. So happy Mother's Day for everybody. And uh, I am very very honored to have uh, Dr. Muzam Al Ahmed on the panel today with us. We're very lucky at MMCC to have the guidance of the Imams Council and to have distinguished board members like Dr. Muzam Al Ahmed and others who will give us guidance and keep us going. It's an honor, Dr. Ahmed, to be with you on the same panel. Uh, I'm not gonna take much time. I'd like to weigh in on the discussion today from three aspects in a, in a brief manner. And then I, I would be happy to yield to Dr. Ahmed in between to give his uh, input. I'd like to weigh in from medical point of view first, and then from religious point of view, and then from economic point of view. Probably three, four minutes and then uh, then, then, then I'd be happy to entertain the discussion. Sure. From, from med medical point of view, as an intensive care physician, I've seen the peak. The peak is way behind us, where a lot of people are in the ventilators and many people, the hospitals were flooded. Now we're past that point. We still have a lot of patients with COVID in the hospitals, but we're past the peak. The intensive care unit is looking halfway like it used to be before with some mixed cases. Some hospitals still have all COVID cases. We're trying to open some floors. So the, 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 the worst is behind us and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. But I would like to caution everybody and I'd like to say something that probably your viewers do not hear it in the media. 
because everybody is busy pointing fingers at each other right now, unfortunately, you know, from all sides. Reality is that coronavirus, the COVID pandemic is far from over. We're still gonna have to deal with it for a few months to come. It is not gonna pack and leave, but we have to adapt to survive and, and work and, and prosper and enjoy life with the COVID uh, pandemic. Meaning we still have, let's talk about the state of Michigan or, or the US. We have hundreds of thousands still infected walking around. In Michigan, we have 20,000 documented walking around. Of course, we have 24, 25,000 recovered, but the real number is far more than that. And the reason is the lack of testing. I don't think we've tested everybody that needs to be tested. If we do, you're gonna realize that the cases are much, much more than what's reported. So having said that, I think our community should be smart. Survival is for the fittest. This is a pandemic, this is a disease. Follow the government uh, regulations, the health department regulation, but also be smart on your own. It is a very contagious disease. You still have to protect yourself as we go back to work when, uh, when we're allowed. We should keep in our inner circle, in the family, there's nobody sick in the family, in your network, nobody's sick. So you could enjoy the company of your family, the company of your friends when we're allowed to, hopefully in the near future, you know, and then try to keep a disease-free environment. There will be spots for some time to come. And I'm not gonna specify, but the, all you have to do is look at the map provided by the state, you know. There's gonna be hot spots where you really wanna avoid large crowds, uh, such as theaters, stadiums, busy restaurants, busy bars. That is gonna be with us for a while, and we just have to adapt. But our social life, our medical uh, care will have to continue. So a lot of patients are not seeing their doctors. That will have to uh, hopefully change in the near future because we do not want to miss cancer cases. We do not want to undertreat diabetes. We do not want to undertreat uh, colon cancer, breast cancer, heart disease. So patients should have the confidence once the system open to to get back the right medical care they need under the safest circumstances. So, so it is not gonna be an on off switch, COVID is gone, no, that's not gonna happen. And you hear about a second peak, a second wave, we have to be prepared for whatever comes, but we still have to enjoy life, prosper, continue to serve. And I'd like to give time to Brother Muzamil to wait on that. Go ahead, Dr. Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First, I also wanted to take the opportunity to thank Imam Ilahi and the wonderful work that the Islamic House of Wisdom does, and Brother Khalil for for the last few weeks running such a professional, informative program. I've seen some of your panelists that you've had, and it's always enlightening to spend some time and listen, and it really helps uh, complete Ramadan because, of course, this Ramadan is like no other, where we're separate from the people. We're not together and um, it's nice to have friendly faces and, and uh, friendly voices uh, uh, make our Ramadan feel uh, a little bit more like it should be. So uh, thank you to all of you. Thank you. thank you, we appreciate it. I, I wanted to also uh, appreciate Dr. Al-Hadidi's leadership in, our, uh, in, in both the medical realm and the community service realm. And he's absolutely correct that we, although things are getting better, uh, with the coronavirus, uh, there's still a, a big threat out there. And Alhamdulillah, the work that the community has done with social distancing and keeping themselves separate and wearing masks, these are things that have been helping. But even despite this, we still see tragedies. And I, was at the, I work at Beaumont Hospital, and uh, as a, I, just yesterday we saw one of our uh, brothers from the community with coronavirus, very ill at the hospital. And it's very sad because the family can't be there, uh, the loved ones can't be there, uh, even the nurses don't come in the room as often. And so 
you're alone and you some, in many cases you spend the last few moments alone um, before you move on to the next world. Alhamdulillah, most people in mission are getting better and uh, with, the ex, with, uh, uh, with excellent medical care and, 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 uh, and being careful about uh, going to, uh, being, around, uh, being around people that don't have the virus, uh, taking uh, precautions, inshallah, um, these kind of tragedies won't happen. But our community is very much at risk because of Ramadan, because we want to be together. We have to just make that sacrifice, just as we sacrifice everything else in, Ram uh, in Ramadan, we have to sacrifice the sense of community for a short time until the threat of the virus is, is gone. So inshallah, please do that. One of the things that MMCC has done is, uh, I think there's two big things that we've been doing this Ramadan that I thought would be of uh, interest to uh, the people listening today. One is uh, MMCC has done a tremendous amount of community work, bringing food uh, to people, uh, feeding both frontline workers, but also families that are underprivileged, that don't have as much access to food that uh, as other people may, and uh, they have uh, distributed thousands of meals uh, through different sites uh, across uh, across Metro Detroit. And Alhamdulillah, we're very blessed to be able to feed so many people. And, uh, uh, and this is, this is work is going to be ongoing. And inshallah, Dr. Al Hadidi can talk a little bit about that because he spearheaded it. And he had a very successful fundraising drive the other day to raise money so we could continue this work in all of the massages around the area. The second thing that uh, we were doing um, that I think will benefit our community is uh, what Imam Ilahi alluded to, and that is a celebration of Eid. Unfortunately, this year, we won't be able to celebrate Eid together uh, because of the risk of the virus. Many of us will be apart. So one of the ideas that uh, we had was why not have an Eid that we can celebrate uh, online uh, or on TV? And so MMCC has uh, uh, gotten time with a WXYZ affiliate Channel 20 and on what we think is going to be Eid Day, Sunday, May 24th at 10 a.m. on Channel 20, available both by antenna and across all the cable stations, Comcast, WOW, Xfinity, you name it. We're going to have an Eid service where we're going to have our beloved Imams uh, give small messages of Eid uh, and greetings to everybody. We're going to have some chronic recitations. But the best part is we're going to have people from the community give their messages of hope and congratulations and, and share their happiness uh, with everybody. And we encourage everybody who's listening and friends and young people to submit videos uh, to air uh, on this program on uh, May 24th. Um, I will uh, share the link with uh, Brother Khalil. I, I put the link in there. Okay. Uh, but we encourage everybody uh, from your youth group, from elderly people, from young people, to shoot a quick video of yourself or your family wishing everyone Eid Mubarak and uh, whatever other message you have please state what massages you're from and upload it and then we'll we want to air it and share it with everyone so at least we have a uh a sense of community uh despite the fact we're not physically together uh spiritually and uh spiritually we are together and inshallah this will be something that'll be very rewarding and beneficial uh for all of us uh, so uh with that I, i'll yield back to brother khalil and uh, thank you again for all the great work you do Absolutely. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. That's a great idea. The, uh, you know, uh, working with the, uh, the TV channel to uh, have some kind of a collective, although it's online, but it gives us that, that uh, collective feeling. And, and uh, I think it's going to bring more people together than any other aid before, because, you know, before we we'll go to different messages. Now, everybody hopefully is going to be tuning in to, uh, to one source. Uh, and especially, um, you know, Sad Khalid, the point you know, of that program is that uh, is not just for the Muslim communities. I mean, when the Channel 20 and other networks, they air the uh, Eid message and Eid celebration, thousands and thousands of non-Muslims that they, they watch that channel and other channels. So it is an opportunity of outreach. And uh, this is really a great initiative of MMCC, and both uh, Dr. Ahmed, Dr. Hadidi, and other board members that, uh, and the Imams Council, that the Eid and this TV outreach is really a very good platform, very powerful platform of dialogue work. So 
it is an opportunity for us to take our message. What is the message of Ramadan? What is the message of Muslim community? Message of love, message of care, message of compassion, message of empathy. This, this is our op opportunity, and this is for one other. I mean, one other of a live program on TV, this worth a lot. And I hope that uh, whoever uh, gets this match message, take it seriously, and especially youth in our community, and uh, record their messages, send your messages to MMCC, and... Uh, let us celebrate this uh, coming Eid, inshallah, as a way of interaction with all the community. Let us have an audience in entire Michigan, not only inside the building of our mosque they used to be have it last year, but now we have a, a national and international audience. And let us take uh, take it seriously and take advantage of that. Don't take it for granted. You know, I mentioned it, the, Dr. Ahmad in the, in the council the other day, we, we were together and, and virtual visitation, uh, that you remember, especially I know that you were involved, Dr. Ahmad, uh, decades ago, probably more than 20 years ago. I forgot what was the occasion, but the Muslim community, uh, and activists like yourself and Haj Ghalib Big and some others, uh, we were trying to publish like one uh, announcement in Detroit News. And they said it cost $25,000. I mean, that was too much money even at that time, $25,000. You can get to buy a house with that. But that was the, the charge for one uh, like note, one announcement. Uh, and uh, I, I think the money was collected at the end, but they still they didn't publish it. They, they made politics out of it, and they, uh, they thought that some people may not like it or like it or whatever. Uh, it became like an Islamoph Islamophobia stuff that they didn't publish it. Yeah, let me and, wait on that. You know, you remember that. And now we have this opportunity that um, it costs much, much less. As a matter of fact, Dr. Hadidi, you mentioned that uh, th there is a cost, but still it's just from individuals like, like yourself. It's not from the budget of MMCC. And so people, Let, all they yeah. need is, you know. Let me weigh on that. Yeah, I, I think uh, what MMCC represents and the strength comes from unity and diversity. And what MMCC thrives for is to be the good face the real face of Islam and the mainstream Muslims as opposed to the face that Islamophobes and some biased media try to show. So we, we thrive to represent all Muslims, law-abiding, taxpaying, hardworking Muslims who love their families, love their country, love their community. And we've been successful with that thanks for the cooperation of all the Imams and the community. So when 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 Brother Muzamil brought the idea and he approached a the channel, there was absolutely no hesitation because they know who we are, what we're about, and what message we give. We give the message of love and diversity and 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 and, and the harmony in the country, and that's the key uh, factor that MMCC is able to do with our relationship with elected officials is we approach things from a positive way. So, so coming this uh, Ramadan, we approach things in a constructive, positive way. We wanna educate our neighbors, our elected officials, non-Muslims about our Ramadan worship. And that's the second part that I wanted to allude to is the religious aspect that MMCC does. We respect all, all sects, all faiths, all colors, all ways to practice Islam because we worship the same God, we worship the, through the same Quran. And we, worship, we, we also respect other religions, you know, Jewish, Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, everybody has his right to worship the way they want. So from religious point of view, we distinguish ourselves as very tolerant and very pleasant to work with. And during this COVID crisis, 
despite all the restrictions and lockdown under leadership like yours. Muslims have been able to enjoy Ramadan and, and fast and pray and show our charity, even though we had to wear masks, like you said. We were at the front line and we took food everywhere, all over town, following, following the law, showing that we're not afraid of COVID. What distinguished Muslims and other faiths, I should say, in general? People as Muslims, we're not afraid of dying because we know when you're gonna die, it's time to die. So, so we, 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 we have full faith that you do the right thing to stay alive, you do the right thing to, to save lives, but you're not a coward. We go on the front line at the hospital with the COVID patients, we deliver food, we do that. Of course, we abide by social distancing because it is the right thing to do to prevent the spread of the disease. But alhamdulillah, from a religious point of view, most masjids, most masjids, I could say 90%, have been able to adapt, like yourself, like Unity Center, like Islamic Center of America, like IONA, like IAGD, and they're giving their religious service online in, in a much better way than ever expected. A very inspirational one, you know, so, so alhamdulillah, we were able to practice our religion despite the restrictions, siyam, zakah, salah, ibadah. So, so my, my take on this, that amrul mu'minu kulluhu khair. In asabahu khairan shakar, when asabahu sharran sabar. What means the, the, the Muslim, the mu'min, everything that happens, we're happy with. Because it's hard, we have patience. We know it's, it's, it's a test. And if it's easy and it's good, we say, alhamdulillah, we thank God for it. So from religious point of view, it has been a new experience, I have to say. And it has been very pleasant. It, it wasn't that bad. I know I would have loved to come to your masjid and have the iftar like every year and go to unity. Usually in Ramadan, I come to your masjid for that beautiful banquet and I see Brother Muzammil five, six times a month and I, I probably have iftar in my house twice the whole month, you know? It's like this iftar, I had iftar with my wife at home every single day. It's a new experience. So, okay. We we'll save the public iftar for next year. Hopefully by next year we are yeah. clear. So, so, so we're happy with it from religious yeah. part. It's like we're happy that this is happening and it's not bad. Just we make it positive. Absolutely. So, so MMCC thrives to be mainstream, inclusive, represent everybody, build bridges. And one thing I have to mention that our fundraiser and campaign, we are going to provide grants to all masjids and centers that need it. And I have, I'm pleased to announce that, yes, Islamic House of Wisdom is going to get a grant from MMC. <laughs> We're very happy yeah. to be part of your yeah. operation. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I have my father's name on your life of three out there. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> you know, so, so we're very happy to work with you and yeah. every masjid. And MMCC is the umbrella that is going to be the backbone to support everybody in crisis and need. And there is no worse than this time for us to stick together. Absolutely. I give time to Brother Muzamil. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You know, Islam is built on change and adaptation, and the community has risen to that challenge. And what you're saying is really good examples of that challenge. You know, as you well know, and I don't need the, it's not my place to, to preach to you when, when, we, when we pray every day and we say Al-Fatiha, and that's what we're, we're making the pledge to change to the better and then adapt to what's going on and then, and then be better. And, and that's really a good example of what you're saying. Um, I have a few, I received a few medical questions I'm going to ask you about. Before I do that, I'd like to welcome Brother Mahdi and uh, Mahdi Ilahi, and, and I ask him very quickly to share his thoughts with us and if he has any questions for you. First of all, assalamu alaikum. Thank alaykum you, salam. Ladies, Imam, uh, Dr. Uh, Mahmoud Al-Hadidi and Dr. Muzammil. It's an honor to be amongst you guys uh, on a night like tonight. Um, you know, you mentioned something interesting, and that was uh, adapt adaptation. Yeah. Uh, if I compare the attitude nowadays to when the coronavirus first, uh, you know, broke through, completely different. 
initially, you know, you were, people were constantly keeping up with how many cases they were going on. They had the TV open that tells you that reports how many cases, how many deaths. But nowadays, it's as if people are still paying attention to it, but it's kind of adapted into the everyday lifestyle. And subhanAllah, that's one of the mercies of Allah that we have such an intellect and we have the ability to adapt through crisis, through things like this, that we can, for the most part, if, if, if we're up to the task, see the silver lining in, in things like this. Uh, I think one question that I have uh, is pertaining to uh, the point that the MMCC uh, really focuses on diversity and unity. You know, you mentioned diversity and unity. And when I think about those two terms, it corresponds with this coronavirus. Because if we, if, if we really think about it, it's in times of crisis that really bring people one, with one another, they bring people together, people from different faiths, you know, maybe prior to this coronavirus, people had different understanding about maybe Muslims or people, or even Muslims had different understanding about Christians or other people from other faiths. But this coronavirus kind of brought people under one roof, focused it under, towards one mission, and that is to give people care. My question is for, for the both of you, um, being in the healthcare setting, do you see any changes in attitude Amongst healthcare professionals, do you see that they're more teamed up, they're more linked up with one another despite the differences in race, despite the differences in beliefs? I'm not sure if, if you can answer that or if you've noticed that, such, such a difference. Yeah, Salam alaikum, Brother Mahdi. That's an excellent question. And it's actually funny because most of the time when you hear the word Muhammad or uh, Mahmoud or Ahmed, uh, we get scared, right? You know, that's what Americans would get scared is, oh my gosh, there's something bad about to happen. But now when you hear those names, usually it's associated with doctors, with nurses, with pharmacists, with, with uh, uh, healthcare workers, because in Michigan, 15% of, of the physicians, for example, I think about 12% of the nurses are from the Muslim community. And this was in a study that they, at ISPU did, um, and, you know, we're only 2% of the population. So our community has invested heavily in taking care of our, the, uh, the entire state of Michigan. And this crisis has brought to light how invested uh, Muslims are in taking care of others and in, in the health care. And this is, again, goes with our uh, core value of being, uh, of being of service to other people. Um, because if, uh, as physicians, as nurses, as health care providers, not only uh, do we have to help our patients, but you know, we have to also go outside into the community and help those in the community too. And this is all you know, part and parcel is one holistic thing that we have to do. And in the, in the hospitals too, this crisis has really brought out the best in people. Um, and people regardless of background, we have a lot of private physicians, for example, in the Beaumont system, in Dearborn, in Wayne, uh, where uh, I'm the chief of staff. These physicians put aside their differences, their practices, a sense of this is my patient. And they said, let's all come together, pool together our resources, uh, and, and let's help these patients out. At our hospital, they converted the entire hospital to a COVID-only facility. Every physician had to give up part of their practice, put in extra time. Uh, nobody asked for compensation. Nobody asked, they said, you know, what's going to happen to my office? What's, they said, let's all come together and do this. And... SubhanAllah, I think across the healthcare systems, at the hospital system that uh, Dr. Al-Hadidi works to, um, and at University of Michigan, where we have so many other, uh, and Henry Ford, people came together from all over. We had, we had nurses uh, who would be taking care of patients on the COVID floor who said to their family, look, I'm going to be in a high-risk situation. Why don't, I'm going to go stay elsewhere, or they sent their children to go stay with their grandparents so that they don't run the risk of uh, bringing the infection back home. So this level of sacrifice, uh, and I know Dr. Hadid himself, he has a beautiful young granddaughter. Um, he, would, he would separate himself from seeing the, you know, the, the twinkle of his eye, his, his pride and joy, until he was sure that he got tested, he was negative, and then he would say he would, he would be able to see her. But again, there's so many sacrifices like this that, uh, that are being made. Uh, and uh, a crisis like this really brings out the best in people. And we really see the uh, really see the uh, the barka in a, you know I know a lot of people have lost jobs and there's a lot of there's a lot of financial insecurity, but uh, the, really people are still rising up helping each other, and this is really uh, uplifting for certainly for me and I think for many others. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, 
I received a couple of questions very quickly uh, without getting into a lot of technicalities. You know, the virus itself, uh, the, 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 this person is asking, it seems to be either, is it changing or now we know more, you know, before we were told that it affects only certain group of people, but now we see more and more people of different ages and different physic, you know, uh, physicalities are getting affected by it. Is, is it changing? What, what, what's going on with that? And what do you know so far? Actually, it's not, it's not changing, but most of the info that we had early on was inaccurate, incorrect, mm -hmm. whether intentionally or unintentionally, coming from China and some of it coming from Europe. What we, what we heard before uh, that only affects the elderly and, and, and the very sick, it is not true. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally worked for five weeks during this crisis. I've been off for two weeks, thankfully, that in Ramadan, I'm not at the front line, but I was there for five long weeks. It really affected the elderly, true, and, and, and the sick and the cancer patients, but diabetics, young diabetics were affected, obese people were affected, and some very healthy, normal people were affected and actually died. Yeah, yeah. I, had, I had people die, a husband and wife, both from COVID, they had a heavy exposure on a ventilator, and one was in an hour, one, one is in our hospital. They had three kids, and they both uh, died. Uh, they, they, they were healthy. So, so the information that we got was inaccurate. Now, the corrected information it affects all ages, much less young people, much much less young people, much less young adults, but over age 40, you're really exposed and you're at risk. Definitely over age 60, 70, definitely there is a high risk. And then this is about the, the question that uh, Brother Mehdi asked about the attitude with the doctors. Uh, when I lived both, I was in the ICU with 30 patients with COVID, 200 in the hospital with COVID. You're very uh, uptight, you're very cautious, you're very nervous, you see seeing people, almost every day people died. And you have your protective gear. It took me half an hour to put it on, half an hour to take it off every day, literally. Because one, one crack, one leak makes you wide open. I had residents, I had colleagues in the intensive care who were infected with the COVID, nurses, practitioners, uh, people of our team were infected. So like you wonder, am I gonna be next? So you're at your highest alert. Now when you're off and I come home and my family is like relaxed about it, just wanna make sure that I stay away and I'm clean. So I shower, I take off my clothes, I sterilize everything, I do everything in my power to kill every single virus <laughs> there. And then thank God I made it. Now I'm off. It's like, if, unless you're watching TV, you wouldn't even know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, you, like, what the heck? What are these people talking about? I'm happy. Look at it outside. It's beautiful. I'm going to yeah. pray. I just don't have to go outside. It's just like heaven. I'm having the best time of my life if I don't watch TV. Yeah. So, so this is the disparity where people get numb. And unfortunately, the media is the hyper alert, hyper alert, bad news, hyper alert. People get numb to it. Excellent. We should be offering solutions. We should be offering how we're going to adapt. We should be offering how do we go forward so people want to hear the news. Because you're going to keep telling them, stay home, stay home, stay home, stay home, stay home, stay home. Yeah. Well, they're going to stay home. Eventually, they're just not going to stay home. Yeah, it's depressing, too. <laughs> if we give the tools of adaptation, yeah. the tools, how do you decrease the risk? At the same time, you, you tell them how serious that is. And there, what's the hot area to avoid? Where's the bad area that you do not want to be in? And if you're there, you got to be careful. You know, if you visit your sister, you're not going to be as, 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 as careful as if you're in a hospital or in a busy place where COVID cases or, and, and people who are sick have to really be conscious about it. In my opinion, it's a crime for somebody infected with COVID to walk around. Honestly, because you might make it not be sick, but, but other people might, people might die with it. So we have to educate people. Absolutely. This is a crime if you expose others. If you know that you have, if you don't have it, you don't, you don't know. Uh, you know, you know, you have your excuse. But people who know that they're sick, they really need to protect yeah. the community.
Absolutely. One more medical question, and that is in regard to face masks. You know, some people in our community don't wear them. And also, how safe is it to go to the hospital? Do they have like a separate section for non-COVID uh, patients than, you know, COVID when you go to the emergency? I think, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think currently um, there has been a lot, uh, the hospitals, they're not ideal. I mean, there are people with COVID there, but they have taken a lot of precautions to cohort patients or keep them in units where they're separate from patients that don't have COVID. They have a lot of rapid testing now uh, in the hospital. So when people arrive, if you're gonna have surgery done, if you're gonna be in the hospital for anything, you get tested and you know, are you a carrier? Are you not a carrier? And if you are, then they, uh, they protect you from others. And uh, if you're not a carrier, then you, can, uh, then you can be in a separate unit. But wearing masks is a, is a necessity, particularly in a hospital, but really any social place you're going, any public place, the masks will significantly reduce the risk of uh, contamination and, and uh, spreading the disease. And it's an inconvenience, but uh, it's unfortunate. We need to get used to it, yeah. We need to get used to it. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd just like to add to that. Yes. With the hospitals, honestly, a lot of hospitals still have COVID cases. And if I'm a patient, I'm, a, I'm, not, a, I'm not a doctor, I would not want to go to the hospital for a routine test right now. Yeah. You know, just to like, just to have a nose surgery, cosmetic, or, or to have a <laughs> liposuction. This is not the time for that, okay? Yeah, okay? But if you have a heart attack, if you have a stroke, if you have an appendicitis, a cholecystitis, yes, you need to go. But my advice, and I hope people don't get upset with me saying that, if I go to the hospital, I would definitely wear the best mask possible, and I would treat everybody as if they had COVID. Absolutely. Because the COVID virus is gonna be in the air, on the on the door handles on the knobs you have to be super careful protect yourself because others gonna try to protect you but nobody will protect you more than yourself i would treat the doctors the nurses everybody as if they potentially have it absolutely, absolutely. They wash your hands be careful and then hopefully you'll go in and out and you'll be safe. Absolutely. This question, either one of you can answer, or maybe both of you, and I also like to li like Imam Ilahi to weigh in on that as well. How much is how much faith is playing a role in the healing process? Well, I think that we all know, and not just with coronavirus, but with any illness, people with faith and people who have who have hope uh, will heal. Uh, people who have no hope, who despair. Uh, they have a much harder time coping. And, uh, you know, faith is, uh, uh, is something that gives you the tools necessary uh, to, uh, to lift yourself up. And, and uh, so I, I think uh, having faith, having prayer uh, is vitally important. I, I love it when I see people of any faith. They may pray different, but the, the, the act of faith, act of prayer is something that really is, uh, is, is a special ingredient that will allow for healing. Absolutely. What is your experience, in, in, in addition to the hand sanitizer and the N95 mask and the gown, everything, before I go to the hospital, every day when I was working, I say, Bismillah alladhi la yadurum ma'asmihi shay'an fil ardi wa la fil sama. A'udhu bi kalimati Allah al-tama min kulli shaytan al wahama min kulli da. Prayer is an essential part of our life. That's why we say Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim when we eat, when we drink. Bad things will not happen when you mix it with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qadr is Qadr, but prayer, I, I believe, was a major fact in protecting me. Absolutely. Imam, I would like to uh, comment on this. That's true. I mean, Al-A'mar uh, biyadillah, we do our best, uh, you know, whatever, our prayer, cleanliness, and uh, nidhafatu min al-Iman, Everything, our religion is religion of reason, rationality, science, logic, everything. So we do everything that we can do from a spiritual point of view and scientific point of view. But we leave the result for, for Allah. Uh, we know that death is part of uh, life. And as Dr. Hadid said, when time, there is a time to leave and time to go. Uh, so we are ready for that. We, we don't consider like a death, like a, like a frightening thing. That's a natural part of our life. 
so that doesn't mean that we love to die, but, uh, you know, we, we like to live and continue our service to our families and humanity. But after we did everything, uh, the, the result then life is in God's hand and Al-Amar Biyadillah or life or death this life is about test, it is about a struggle. Uh, this planet was not supposed to be a perfect place. If we think that everything should be perfect, we are in a wrong uh, location. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's true, as Dr. Ahmad said, that faith is about hope. So do our best and, uh, you know, اعمل لدنياك كأنك تعيش أبدا وعمل لأخرتك كأنك تموت غدا. So that moment of preparation, but with, with logical, logical sense. You know, something that these days, uh, uh, probably Dr. Hayri, Dr. Ahmad, you heard about uh, uh, this evangelical leader, uh, Reverend, uh, Franklin uh, Graham, that he had a hospital in, in New York and he closed the hospital. The, the hospital was serving the, uh, the uh, victims of coronavirus. And that was a huge uh, like controversy today and yesterday among the interfaith community that how such a thing uh, can happen. SubhanAllah, I mean, uh, you know, in the middle of uh, this crisis and in a city like New York and the hospital that its services are badly needed at this time, uh, we see such a thing happen. I don't know if you heard about it or not, but that was a big controversy that how come a faith leader uh, does such a thing in the middle of this uh, corona crisis? Uh, it was a big issue in the in the interfaith community. Yeah. Well, he's he, he's not here to answer that. So, <laughs> but, uh, uh, is it true that the second wave could be worse since we don't have a specific medication for COVID, nor do we have a vaccine? I, I can answer. That's my opinion. Okay. It's not a study, but that's that's as as the educated opinion. No the second wave is not going to be worse because the community is educated and, and everybody, no matter how low in education, you've been educated the COVID, unless people elect to be careless. And, and that's very going to be a very limited section of the community. The second wave will not be worse, but it is not going to be uh, uh, like sudden disappearance of the disease. It is going to continue. You might see waxing and waning number of cases, depends on temperature, hot spots, events. It's just like any other infectious disease. Uh, but I think that the, the, the community is, is educated. That there is no vaccine and there is no treatment despite what you hear. We have, yes, we have used some treatments that really worked and it's all personal opinion. And you've heard, you've heard in the media, I do not want to speak for or against any treatment. But yes, in my experience, yes, some treatments worked, but it's not controlled randomized trials. So our best weapon is protection okay. and personal health at this time until a vaccine or treatment comes. And that is not in the foreseeable time. Absolutely. How, how long? Thing, Go ahead, Dr. Ahmed. I was going to say, the other thing is that because of the social distancing, if we get a second wave, it shouldn't overwhelm the medical system like the first wave was about to do. And now I think uh, we have a lot more clinical experience in how to treat it, how to deal with it. And so, inshallah, I, I don't think a, a second wave we have to be worried about, but we are much more capable, alhamdulillah, of handling it than we were when it first happened in uh, March. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Brother Mahdi, uh, any other uh, questions? No, I think uh, the... the, uh, the very well organized presentation. Um, I just was, uh, I was curious about what was, what, what do you guys think the demand would be for healthcare workers moving forward? I know that prior to 
um, this coronavirus outbreak. A lot of the healthcare professions were, were saturated, in, especially in the state of Michigan. Um, and nowadays, a lot of people in some certain aspects of healthcare, they don't have as many hours working. But moving past this coronavirus, what do you see or what do you think the demand will be for healthcare workers in the future, maybe in preparedness for a potential other outbreak for, for another infection or other virus? MashaAllah, this is a very good question, if I may, Brother Muzammil. This uh, comes to the third part that I wanted to allude to, is the economic uh, uh, part of this disaster. Uh, unfortunately, most doctors had a pickup, and yes, the stimulus helped a little bit. A lot of nurses were laid off, healthcare providers were laid off. Certain fields were very needed, respiratory therapists, anesthesiologists, intensivists, pulmonologists. We were at the front line, we, we, we had to work a lot more than what we, what we could. Other specialties took a big hit and a big pay cut and, and much reduced, but that's across, that's across the board, not only in the medical profession. I, I just wanna, wanna caution that the economic consequences of this pandemic is yet to be seen, and it is not to be taken lightly. I know you see it on TV, the billions and trillions given, but this is just a drop in the bucket. You know, it's just one month of our GDP. So if you shut down and have, have, have longer shutdown, you're gonna need a lot more trillions to, to make up for the people who are staying at home and not working. So, so we cannot submit to the fear. And, and this is the message I, I would like to give our community. And I hope I'm wrong, but, but the, the worst of the economic impact has not been realized and has not been seen and will not be seen till later this year and sometime next year when the stimulus run out and all the free money runs out and reality hits. Exactly. So now, now reality will it, and I think the federal government is going to keep injecting money in the economy and all that, but 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 there will be a point where it is going to slow down. Absolutely. So so as 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 a professional, as an employer myself, as an employee myself, I urge everybody who has a job to keep that job, and if you're allowed to go to work, go to work. Don't stay at home and collect unemployment. It is not going to last. If it lasts two months, you might not have your job after two, three months. Okay. I think everybody should try, like we said before, survival for the fittest. If people have a job and they're allowed to work and their employer call them, they should go to work. Okay. So they could get the job when the economy starts to open. Because pay cuts are going to be across the board. I think we're definitely in recession. I hope we don't see a depression, but it might be coming. So, so we really have, while we're sharing, while we're donating, that while we're sharing with others, while we taking out of our mouth and our pocket to give others, we should still keep our jobs, try to keep our businesses, don't rely on handouts. Absolutely. You know, this uh, reminds me, Dr. Hadidi, the Hadid from Imam Ali, alayhi salam, said that, al-ibadatu sab'una juz'an awwaluha al-amal. That means that the ibadah, worshiping, is like 70, you know, b dimension or 70 parts. But they start with al-amal. So, i'malu, fasayar allahu amalakum wa rasuluhu wal mu'minun. Uh, that is a, a great message for, for everybody, our community, other communities, that al-amal, uh, al-amal, al-amal, work, 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 hard work, worship and work, both of them come together. I will say, uh, Brother Mehdi was alluding to, perhaps is also, there is a shortage of nurses and respiratory therapists, but I will say, and I think Dr. Hadidi will agree, that working in the healthcare profession, in medicine, is a truly rewarding uh, profession. I tell you, for the young people out there, there's nothing, you know, there might, there's some, sometimes uh, pay is good, sometimes it's not good, but for you to be able to go in every day, make a difference in someone's life, get them better and heal them, you know, with the, with the grace of Allah, that is a reward that you cannot, you, can, you know, it doesn't matter if you get a pay cut or not. It's something that's truly rewarding. It makes you want to go in every single day. So if you are a young person and you're looking for, uh, thinking about a profession, healthcare is a is a calling that 
you will not be sorry that you took because it's something that is truly rewarding and both spiritually and, and, uh, uh, and, and mentally it's challenging. So please don't shy away from healthcare. Absolutely. For <laughs> humanity. Yeah, absolutely. Saving lives, nothing within that. Uh, any final thoughts, Dr. Al Haridi? I really hope that everybody enjoys the rest of Ramadan. Al Ashur al Akhir are coming. Imam Ilahi, please us keep us in. Uh, please keep us in your prayer, and we will be in your neighborhood, inshallah. And uh, let's just uh, do the best out of it. And uh, happy Ramadan, happy Eid. Let's just celebrate and show the best out of our nature. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you again for such a wonderful program. Have a wonderful Ramadan. And as Imam Lahi started this program out, I wanted to also give a special uh, uh, congratulations to all the mothers. We, all of us are our lives to them. They have done so much sacrifice for us to be sitting here today and doing everything that we do. My own mother, I'm blessed to have her uh, just come back to uh, come back and stay with me. So subhanAllah, let's uh, please make a special dua for our mothers and and do give them something more than just some candy, inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Mahdi, bless. final yeah, thoughts? Absolutely. Happy Mother's Day and, and, and keep us all in your prayers. We know that uh, both Dr. Mahmoud and Dr. Muzammal, their prayers and their dua, they reach Allah faster than our prayers. So please keep us <laughs> in your prayers and in your duas. Okay. Uh, Dr. Hadidi, uh, your, your mom is still alive or? Uh... My mom passed five years ago, and I, I feel for you. You just lost your mother. There is no loss like losing a mother. She's alive in my heart. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Okay, Imam, could you please uh, uh, include us with a prayer, if you would, please? The Prophet said, Ummaka, Ummaka, Ummaka. You know, Al Jannah to Tahta Akdam al Ummahat and Tuba Liman Kana Lahu, O Kana Lahu, Umman Afifa. Uh, the righteous uh, mom, uh, that's the biggest blessing. And, you know, I know but we don't have this opportunity to have uh, uh, these professionals and leaders with us. So uh, take a couple of minutes. You know what Dr. Hadidi mentioned in the beginning that we are working for unity. And I, I want your presence to send a good message to uh, uh, the, the younger generation in our community. I want them to look at uh, Dr. Ahmad and Dr. Hadidi as good role model that uh, don't limit yourself just your professional work that, oh, we are so busy and we go to hospital and uh, always talking about I'm busy, busy, busy and no time for anything else. Look at this example. Uh, we have two doctors with all this involvement and professional work, but still they have time to uh, come to the community, go from, uh, from place to place, uh, participating in all these meetings, having all this outreach with the media, with the, uh, the political leaders, social leaders, interpret leaders. So you can see the capacity, and I hope this. Uh, you brothers as a mighty model, you, your presence, your model send this message to our young generation that get involved. This is what we need really in uh, outreach uh, while we are uh, dealing with uh, uh, so much uh, uh, ignorance in the society. I mean, you both mentioned about uh, and Mahdi uh, raised the question whether there is coronavirus like the impact. I mean, it's true that uh, as a nation, majority of people think that, uh, well, we have to be united. We are at war with this corona. We have to deal with this enemy. We have to work together, cooperation. But at the same time, some people, they didn't get the message. We know that I mean, look at this example of uh, this uh, brother, his name was Ahmad, by the way. I don't know if he was Muslim or not, uh, but uh, Ahmad al uh, Berry, I think, Alberry, uh, that he was, uh, he was just running in, in, in his own area, and he was shot and, you know, killed by those guys, and it happened two months ago. And nobody was talking about it, but then they saw that graphic video and tragic video 
Now, it is a big, big issue in the media. All the media in the last few days are talking about this uh, uh, black man, African-American man, who was killed just because of his color. And those uh, father and son who, who shot him, uh, they, they thought that, well, you know, what is the justification? No justification. This is what even Joe Biden was saying, that this is a pandemic of, of race. This is really another virus that even the, a, a disease like Corona could not wake some people up and to say enough is enough, no more hatred, no more racism. Let us uh, go back to our humanity, to empathy for others. So that shows that really we have a long way to go and we need to work together and bring more enlightenment, more awareness, more wake up to everyone that we are one humanity, as Imam Ali said, and Naso Senfan, Imma Akhul Laka Fid Deen, Aw Nadirul Laka Fil Khalq. People are even your brothers and sisters in faith or your brothers and sisters in humanity. We, all of us from Adam and, and Eve, we, we believe in that. So uh, what Dr. Hadidi was saying, uh, the diversity in Muslim community, Shia and Sunni, we have uh, an, an uh, expression from Imam Musa Sadr that he used to say, Naam littawa'if la littawa'ifiyah. Means it's okay to have different school of thought in Islam. It's normal. We have Hanafi, we have Hanbali, we have Shafi'i, we have Maliki, we have Jafari. I mean, there are Tawa'if, there are different sections and, uh, you know, uh, uh, different Madahib uh, Fiqhiyah. Uh, but that doesn't mean at Ta'ifiyah, that doesn't mean to be sectarian. To have different sects is something. And to be sectarian and uh, have a ta'asub uh, of, of ta'ifi is something else. Uh, Dr. Hadidi said we, we are united by one God, obviously. You know, what else uh, can unite us more than the Holy Quran? I mean, we have one book called Quran. It's the same book, whether you are Shi'i, whether you are Sunni, you live in your uh, United States. You live in Iran, you live in Saudi Arabia. Anywhere you live is the same book. And like 80, 90% of everything that is in our aqidah, in our jurisprudence are the same. So why should we let that a little differences that is everywhere? Among the, among the Sunni, there are differences in faith and jurisprudence. Among Shia, there are differences in... in why we let some... Uh, uh, voices of Asabi and fanaticism to, to divide our ummah because those who are against our enemy, against the unity of, of Muslim community or any community, there are people that they don't like to see unity. Whether I, we are I, I share, united under Islam, whether we are united under Arabs, whether we are united under nationalism, they are against any unity. So if you are not united against Islam, but you say, oh, we are all Arabs. There are people, they don't tolerate that. You cannot be, oh, we should be united because we're all Arabs. And you see that division among, you know, everywhere. So it is very important that we uh, focus, first of all, on similarities and the things that unite us rather than things that divide us. And secondly, have this education and understanding that really what is uniting us is much, much more than what the differences is. And differences, the diversity is perfectly normal. The diversity makes us more dynamic. I think it is a time of this coronavirus that uh, not unity among the Muslim community, but as Americans and citizens, we be really one nation under one, uh, one God and focusing on the same values, the, the respect, uh, human rights, uh, justice, uh, peace. These are really the things that, especially Holy Month of Ramadan, because the message of Ramadan is peace. The message of Ramadan is love. The message of Ramadan is truth and justice. And I hope that inshallah we can have a, 
uh, role models like you, Dr. Hadidi and uh, uh, Dr. Muzammil, uh, among us. I hope that we have more people. I pray to have more people like yourself in our community. Honestly, I, I pray from my heart many times. And I said, I wish we had much more of the uh, community activists that they really get involved, they be part of this outreach and feel responsible that we are all responsible. Kullukum ra'wa kullukum mas'ul is really a responsibility for all of us that not only focusing on our own job and our own family, but look at uh, us as a community, as a country, that to see what can we do to serve. How can service be really our, our, our message? Whether serving the hospital, serving the mosque, serving on the street, whatever. And this time, the time of this corona is a perfect time that we show that as Muslims, we are there to serve. And Al-Nas Ayalullah wa ahabbuhum ilallah and fa'ahum lil-Nas. Whoever is serving more is closer to God. So you are close to God, not only I pray for you, you pray for us as well, Dr. Hadidi, because really <laughs> closeness to God is that those are Muqarrabun. Asabun in what? In service. When you are doing this service, you are fil musabiqa. Musabiqa fil service. And if you are asabun, then you are Muqarrabun. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, I, I really appreciate the words are, are really, really beautiful that you said. And, and one last comment before I excuse myself. Uh, having worked with the Shia community, you, you, you try to practice the best of the two. You know, I, I love when it comes to the love of the Prophet and al Bayt. I love it how the Salah al Nabi. Salah ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Every time I hear it, it's so, so inspiring. So, so we could learn from the others things that, 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 that's really beautiful. And then, you know, the Quran and the Hadith. So, so it's, it's one religion. And it's sad that some people don't see it that way. It's just education and love is going to change the world. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair and thank you so much. Could you conclude the Imam with a prayer, please? Yeah, actually, I chose this prayer, which is about Walidain, and it's from uh, Sahih Pasajadiya, that is the prayer book of Imam Zainul Abidin, his son of Imam Hussein, alayhim salam And in this dua, he is uh, praying for Walidain. So it is Yomul Om, and we are going to have Yomul Ab as well. So we do this prayer for our parents, whether they are alive or if they already passed away. Uh, if they are there now, we have an opportunity to, um, you know, be with them or call them, show appreciation, send a gift for them. And if they are uh, dead, then we can still send a gift for them, a charity, a, a prayer, doing something on behalf of their soul. Still we can uh, make their soul uh, in their eternal journey happy by a sadaqa jari and by doing something. So let us do this prayer for Imam, Imam Zain al uh, praying for his parents and for all the parents. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim اللهم اخصص والدي بالكرامة واجعل طاعتي لوالدي وبري بهما اللهم خفض لهما صوتي واتب لهما كلامي واعتف عليهما قلبي وسيرني بهما رفيقا واحفظ لهما ما حفظا ما حفظاه مني في صغري 
ولا تجعلني في أهل العقوق للآباء والأمهات اللهم لا تنسني ذكرهما في أدبار صلواتي وفي أنا من آناء الليل وفي كل ساعة من ساعات نهاري إنك ذو الفضل العظيم والمن القديم وأنت أرحم الراحمين بجاه محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين والسحبه المنتجبين ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you. Thank you, Imam. Thank you, Dr. Hadidi. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. Thank you, Mahdi. We appreciate it. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.